Hey, guess what? It's here. The video that I'm going to be talking about network automation and orchestration using a tool called Unimus. So in a previous video, I showed you the power of Microtech scripting. So with Unimus, we're going to use a bit of that scripting, but we're also going to be automating a lot of functions on Unimus. So let's enjoy and let's get into the video. So let's talk about network automation a little bit, what it is, what's its benefits and how we can go about setting up some automation. So in a nutshell, network automation comes down to us automating certain functions on the network, be it stuff like configuration backups, um, perhaps uh, things like error recovery. That is the type of things that you typically like to automate on the network just to make sure that there's no manual intervention required from a person having to log onto a device to make changes. Automation is really, really useful. And I do think it is a skill set that a lot of network engineers need to pick up on. Um, then we get stuff that we call orchestrators or orchestration. So I don't want to scare you with that word. It's actually really, really awesome what an orchestrator does, because if you think about it, have you ever watched or listened to an orchestra and you've seen, um, I think you can call him the conductor, but in this sense, we're just going to call it him or her, the orchestrator, this person that stands at the front and they have the stick in their hand and they're showing the, the musicians, hey, this is how we're going to do this high note, low note, high note, low note. Um, that is what orchestration is on networking as well. Instead of having to do everything on each component on each musician, the orchestrator, it's a central point, it can be a server, will be running commands and automation for us. So we can push basically code from an orchestrator from something like Unimus that I'll be using to various different components or routers to either add configuration, remove configuration or automate certain stuff like uh, backups. So that's what we're going to do now. And I just want to quickly show you how awesome Unimus is uh, when we do something very basic uh, and building off of that little script that I had in the previous video. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log on to my Unimus server and I'm going to do a quick preset that I'm going to add. And we'll go over Unimus uh, briefly as well, how to set some things up. But I just want to show you the power of automation quickly, because what I'm going to do or orchestration, I'm going to add a VLAN preset and we can add some commands. And this is exactly like um, the command line that you'd be on a device. So I'm just going to add that same script that I had for the Microtix. So local X, which is a variable uh, for X from, let's say from 10 to 20, uh, do equals uh, curly brackets, interface, VLAN, add, uh, VLAN dash ID equals dollar sign X. So I'm just showing that it's that VLAN or that um, variable. Then we're going to do a V name and we're going to make quote marks VLAN underscore dollar sign X. And we're going to do an interface equals ether four. very basic marketing script to add VLANs. And I'm going to close that, save this window. And then this preset, I'm just quickly going to push to all of my microtics that you could see in that topology. So don't worry about all of uh, these buttons yet. I'll show it to you after the, this configuration bit is done. I just want to show you the power quickly. So I'm just going to run the script now or run this preset. It's busy running. So it's a pushing configuration. And if I look at my devices, I can actually see configuration was being pushed. If I look at my mass config push, it's done the output and it's actually logged into each of those microtics for me. I didn't have to log into any of them. It ran that script. And if I log into any of these microtics, I should actually see that all of those VLANs exist. So if I do an interface VLAN print, I've added VLAN 10 to VLAN 20 on Ether 4 for all of these routers. So that's actually pretty crazy and cool because regardless of it being a VLAN 
that we push to all of the devices. What I'm trying to show you is you can push configuration to all of your routers or only specific routers if you want to. And it makes it a lot easier because it was literally the push of a button and typing in the commands from here instead of having to log into each device. All right, so this is kind of the power of Unimus. Now I'm going to show you a few cool things on Unimus and just how we can tweak it and get it and actually work on Unimus properly. All right, so if you are looking to get Unimus, first thing that you'd like to do is you'd like to actually go to their website, unimus.net, and you will click on the Get Started Using Unimus. And there's three steps. There's actually only two steps, to be completely honest. You're going to download the Unimus client, which you'll install on a server or on your machine or wherever you want to host Unimus. So you download that, install it, then you need to create a Unimus account and the account is needed because by default Unimus will only allow you to have five devices and after that then you need to start paying for some licensing fees but it is nice that you can add five devices uh, without paying and if you have a small network this will work out just fine for you. So with Unimus you create an account and then that account you're actually going to have a license ID that you need to specify on your Unimus client. So once you've installed the client uh, you're going to boot up Unimus and it's actually going to give you a few prompts that you just need to follow along. So it'll ask you, what do you want the username to be? Uh, what will default credentials be for devices that you're going to log in? So you just follow along with the prompts. It is very straightforward. If you do struggle at any part, you can go to the Unimus wiki, so wiki.unimus.net. Then you can find what, where you're installing this on and follow the steps just to make sure that you are doing everything correctly. All right, once you've actually installed Unimus, uh, you will log in with whatever credentials you're using. And I'm just logging in with my own credentials. And from here, it will give you a nice overview of how many licenses you're using. If you run out of licenses, it will show you it's full here. It does have some nice modes. It might start up in the light mode. I prefer to use the dark mode because it's a bit easier on the eyes. But from here, you can see a good overview of everything that's happening on Unimus. You can also navigate to the settings because settings, it will have a lot of the settings that you define during the setup phase, but you can define things like custom schedules and think of this like the schedule on a Microtech device. You can set up a custom schedule of when you'd like specific scripts or backups to be run. Uh, credentials is in essence a tab where you can specify logging credentials that can be used to connect to a remote device. So this is quite nice, especially if you have multiple uh, credentials, you can put them here and you can bind these credentials to specific devices so that that device needs to use this username and password to connect. You can also set up stuff like notifications to let you know via email if something happens, if there's an error, if there's any configuration changes. So that's actually quite nice for change control management. You can set up additional users with the user management. And this is so easy because you can just add a new user, call it whatever you want, user one, give it a password, and then you can set it up for read only, operator or administrator. So if you give it administrator access, it has full access and it can do everything on the Unimus uh, server. Uh, one thing in this uh, other settings that I'd like to specify or show you is the connectors because this is quite important because the SSH connector, Telnet connector, HTTP and HTTPS connectors, they are used by Unimus to actually log in remotely to the device using a management port and then it uses the connector to actually run this code or commands that you've specified. So if you change the SSH port on your remote device, then you need to just update your SSH connector to something what you've updated that port to. Maybe you've made it 2202, but by default, it should just be port 22. If you want to use Telnet and SSH, you can just click on the enable buttons and that will enable either one. Uh, but I do recommend using SSH to connect whenever possible. All right, so that covers the settings bit. Oh, I just want to show you the license settings. I'll blur out my license key, but your account that you log in with Unimus, you'll see there's a license key. You just need to copy that license key, paste it in here, save it, and then your Unimus is basically A-OK. -okay. It's 100% ready. Okay, so that covers the settings. I just quickly want to go over devices, zones, and device tags. Now I've already added a bunch of devices on here. And what I'll do is I might just remove a few of these devices just so that I can re-add them and explain the device adding process. So once I've removed those devices, what I want you to take note of first is that you do get stuff called zones and device tags. So I want you to think of zones as um, a custom area 
that you want to put specific routers in. So perhaps you have, uh, you're an ISP and you run multiple customers and you have multiple routers for those customers and you want each customer to be in a specific zone that's identifiable to that customer. This is where you can do that. You can create a zone for that customer and you can basically say all of these routers belong to that zone. And then if you want to run code specifically for that zone, then that's how you can do that. Uh, device tags, it works in a similar principle to zones. Basically, you can add a tag, but you can place tags inside zones as well. So that's actually quite nice. And let's go back to the devices and add some devices. So if I removed a couple of devices, I'm just going to click the add button. And then all that you need to do is you need to specify what the IP address is of the device. Um, you can give it a description and here you can specify which zone the device belongs into. If you have a custom schedule defined, you can put it in here. Credentials, again, you can bind the credentials or you can leave it on discover. If you leave it on discover, your um, Unimus will just use the passwords and usernames that you've defined and it will find which one works and then it will keep using that one. And I'm just going to click on this create another device because we're going to add multiple devices quickly. So 216. 217, 218, and 219. Now, as you can see in the background, it's actually running a discovery job at the moment, which in essence, it's just checking to see if it can log into the device and it wants to see what username and password it can log in with. And once the discovery is done, the button here on the right will either go green or red. If it goes green, it means that the device has been successfully added and you can now run custom configurations to the device or you can do backups of that device as well. It's quite nice that it also shows you what vendor the device belongs to, what the type is, and as well as its model. That is actually quite nice. If, oh, here's something that I wanted to set. It's uh, network scans that we can do. So if you wanted to, you can actually do a network scan to import devices. So let's do a network scan. And then what I'm going to do is just add the, let's call it my management network. Man network. Automatically add discovered devices to Unimus. And let's just add the 192.168.149.0 slash 24 subnet. I'm going to save that. And we can quickly remove all of these devices. And then all I'm going to do is run that network scan. So let's scan now. And this is how quick and easy it can be to add devices onto Unimus. So it's scanned all of these devices. There's actually a few more IPs that needs to be added, but this is quite cool. So let's just wait for this to finish. But if I go to my devices, you can see it's it's been adding the devices as well. So this is so cool. If you click on a device, you can also run backups from here. But if you go to the backups tab, you can also select the device and click on backup and then it will backup the device that way. But let's quickly run backups for all of our devices. And as you see, it's busy running a backup now. And if I go to my backups tab, if I click on any of these items, it will actually show you the backup file that it's done. Now that we've added backups, it's, uh, this is actually going to be pretty neat. I want to show you a bit of change control with Unimus because Unimus allows you to keep track of any changes that's been made on any router um, for, let's say, auditing purposes, because maybe you need to keep track of those things, especially if you start working in larger ISPs that need these things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just quickly going to log on to a router and I'm just going to add an IP address to one of those VLANs that we added. So let's do an IP address, add address. Um, let's make it 10.0.0.1 slash 24 on VLAN 10. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Unimus and let's run backups again. <laughs> but I want to show you with the backup tabs, there's actually multiple backup files that should be here now and if there's any changes as you can see on that first one so the second one there, there was no change so that's why i still just got the one single file there but on this first one dot 200 we can see there is two configuration files and what we can do is we can select both files and we can click on this diff or difference button 
and this will show you exactly what change there is between the two configurations because this will now let us know hey there's an additional ip address that's been added on this router and this is the date that i picked it up so this is actually very useful for change um, purposes so that you can make sure that you keep con keep in pace with change control i really love this about unimus all right i want to show you just how easy it is with besides the vlans that i added we can create a base template and it doesn't need to be in microtech scripting or in the microtech script language you can create a very basic preset of things that you always want on your routers that you always need there to be so let's just call this the basic configuration and what i'll do is what we'd like the routers to always have is ip dns server add server equals 8888 and 11111 so i always want that dns server to be added and let's maybe say this is maybe like triple poe connections and uh, these are just some cps at a site and we want them all to basically have the same lan ip we can do that so i might do something like ip address add address equals 192.168.0.1 slash 24 on interface ether2 it is nice that you can click on this expand window just to make it a little bit bigger so that you can always change what you need to change and if there's maybe some custom firewall rules you want to add like ip firewall um ip firewall let's, let's just quickly look at a rule we want to add so ip firewall um Alter add uh, input or let's just call it chain is input uh, let's make the protocol ICMP and let's do a action drop and it's just also set the interface uh, in interface equals ether one so this is a very basic firewall rule just to drop icmp traffic so let's say if this was your wan interface maybe you don't want people to be able to ping the wan interface um which is actually pretty normal because it's a icmp is maybe used by people for some reconnaissance just to make sure that the link is up or not and now we've got three very basic commands we are going to add dns server we're going to add ip addresses to ether2 and we're going to add a basic firewall rule. I'm going to save that. And here we can see there's no schedule set for it and it's currently just idle. But let's quickly then set targets. I'm going to add targets and these are the devices we added earlier. And let's add it for all of the devices. So I can show you how quick and easy this is. And I'm going to close this box. And I'm just going to run now. So basic configuration. Push that to all of the devices. Let's look at our devices. Let's see. It shows that's been done. Let's go to the mass config. Command not supported. Oh, so I actually think I made a, a mistake with the DNS server. So let's just quickly jump back into um, Microtik. So what we want to do is IP DNS um, set servers 888 and 111 so this is actually the command we want to use on microtech so i'm just going to copy this go back to unimus and just update that command this is how straightforward and easy it is let's save the command and this is nice that unimus let us know hey there is an error it's not going to run so let's just try running it again and command not supported by device uh what's not supported oh i know why that happened <laughs> extra d there all right let's save this again let's run now and now this should go through so i've added very basic commands there's dna service we set we set ip addresses and we set a firewall rule we've basically set this to all of the devices and let's do that backup thing again. So let's back up. And then we can quickly look at any 
changes. Nice. Here we can see there are some differences. Let's look at the differences. And here it shows us this configuration has been added. And in theory, what's happened now is if I go into my command prompt and I ping any of these routers, let's see, 149.200. I can't, but that is because of that firewall rule that we implemented. And now you'll also notice that each router will also have um, all of that configuration added. So if I do a export, we've got our VLANs from earlier. I've got the address that I added on Ether2. I've got the DNS servers and I've got the firewall rule. So this is perfect. So I've now just shown you how quick and easy it is to actually set up um, backups as well as pushing configuration from Unimus and how to review the change management. So that is really, really awesome. I really enjoy that. All right, we're going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And again, I'd like to thank all of the uh, Patreon uh, members and the YouTube members that's been helping support the channel that way. I really appreciate that a lot. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed and I am out. Bye.